Greetings in the name that is above every other name, the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I hope that uh, you are doing well by the grace of God and that he has kept you well. I want to believe that God is in operation in your life and that you're walking from glory to glory, from testimony to testimony as your faith is being activated by listening to the word of God. Let us be reminded that faith comes by hearing and hearing by God's word. And as you give yourself to constantly receive the word of God, that faith is being built in your life, in your heart, and there is no mountain that will be so big for you to move, that as you put your trust and your faith in God, that things are turning around for the glory and the honor of his holy name. And so today, in word addiction, we are going to read through the book of Isaiah, chapter number 22, all through to chapters number 25. And I want to believe that God will speak to you, that God will encourage you, that God will uplift you, and that you shall receive a word that shall bring a turnaround in your life. As we continue to read God's word, it is my prayer and my desire that the appetite to consume from heaven, the bread of life, shall be in your life. And as you study God's word, as you read God's word, that he shall manifest himself in your life. Remember the book of um, John chapter number 14, uh, verses 21, that he who loves me is the one who keeps my command. And my father will love him also, and I will come and manifest myself uh, to them. I want to believe that through this journey that the Lord has been manifesting in your life. I believe that there are testimonies arising, and please share these testimonies with us, that we may see, the, we may acknowledge together with you, and celebrate together with you the doing of the Lord in your life. Praise be the name of the living God. So why don't you pray? As we begin our reader today. Father, we thank you. Lord of heavens, we honor you. What a glorious and awesome God you are. Our hearts are filled with praise towards you. We are elated when we look upon you. For when we look upon you, our faces, our hearts are radiant because of the glory that emanates from you. So Father, as we look into your word today, how we pray that its intent shall be revealed to us. And the King of glory, you shall build us in faith, in understanding what your Holy Spirit wrote in ages back for such a time as this. I pray that these scriptures will come forth with revelation, with insight, and with, with timely impact upon every reader today. In Jesus' mighty name, we do trust, pray, and believe in. Amen. Isaiah chapter number 22, verses 1. The burden against the valley of vision. What else you now that you have all gone up to the housetops? You who are full of noise, a, tam a, a, a tamtors a city, a joyous city. You slain men are not slain with a sword, nor dead in battle. All your rulers are fled together. They are captured by the archers. All who are found in you are bound together. In other words, they are limited. They have been cast with a curse. They have been bound together. There is nothing they can do. They are limited. They are fled from afar. Therefore I say, look away from me. I will weep bitterly. Do not labor to comfort me because of the plundering of the daughters of the daughter of my people. For it is a day of trouble and a trading down and perplexity. But the Lord God of hosts, in the valley of vision, breaking down the walls and of crying to the mountain, a lamb bore the quiver with chariots of men and horsemen. And Kir uncovered the shield. It shall come to pass that your choicest valleys shall be full of chariots, and the horsemen shall set them in hurry in the at the gate. It says your choicest, your choicest valleys, where you have chosen, where where you love, where where you see, you know, it is befitting that place. 
you shall see an array of armies. You shall see chariots. There will no longer be lovely valleys, but you'll be looking at them. The loveliness of it will disappear because that place will be full of horsemen and chariots who are coming to bring the judgment of God over, over you. It says, remove the protection of Israel, of Judah. You looked in that day to the armor of the house of forest. You also saw the damage to the city of David, that, war, that it was great. And you gathered together the waters of the lower pool. You numbered the houses of Jerusalem and the houses you broke down to fortify the wall. Number them to bring them down that they may bring up the walls of Jerusalem. Listen, he says, um, you also made a reservoir between the two walls for the water of the old uh, for the water of the old pool but you did not look at its maker that old pool you never looked at its maker so you build this wall and in between the walls you put a new pool that you may bring and transfer you know the waters of the old pool there but you forgot to look at its maker which is God so they are building reservoirs for themselves. They are looking upon, uh, they're, they're trying to solve their needs and they feel that they have achieved. They are so proud about it that they have forgotten about the maker of that pool and the leader or, or the God of Israel. And he says, but you did not look to its maker, nor did you have respect for him. You fashioned it long ago. And in that day, the Lord God of hosts called for weeping and for mourning, for baldness and for guarding with sackcloth. But instead, instead, joy and gladness, slaying oxen and killing sheep, eating meat and drinking wine. Let us eat and drink, for we tomorrow we do what? We die. And then it was revealed in my hearing by the Lord of hosts, Surely for this iniquity, there will be no atonement for you. Even to your death, says the Lord God of us. Let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. The Lord had it and he says, as you've spoken it, so shall it be. The power of words, the power of confessions, out of their pride, they were eating, they were marrying. Your law, you only live once. They, they ate, they drank, saying, tomorrow we die. What? What about? Let us enjoy. Tomorrow we die. And God said, your speech has reached my ears. And listen, even to your death, says the Lord God of hosts. The Lord Jesus Christ tells us, let us be careful of the words that we speak. Why? Because there is a recording. That heaven records and God shall bring to ev to judgment every word that you speak so Christ advises this let your yes be yes and your no be no and any other word let it be from the devil let us be conscious of what we say a lot of people have messed up their destinies a lot of people have called forth calamities and you know somebody um, one of the young men in the church was asking me Percy how come that the negative words that we use, you know, they, they happen so fast. And the positive words that we speak, it seems as if they're not happening. I don't know, the Lord just spoke to me and he said, do you know what? The negative words that we speak, they come out of a heart that is propelled by fear. So somebody responds and says, oh, I am dead, I'm dead, I'm like this, it is done, I'm, I'll be poor, I will lose this. They are speaking out of fear. And because you're confessing out of fear, it is established. And yet there are some positive words that you say, you know, God is going to bless me. I am the head and not the tail. But they are not generated out of faith. So no matter how positive you speak, but you don't have faith in what you say, it will not come to pass. But words that have been generated from a genuine fear, guess what? They stand for trial. They stand to fulfill. That's why God keeps, keeps telling us through his word, fear not, fear not, 
fear not. Because what you produce out of fear, guess what? It stands. What you produce out of faith stands as well. So the choice is yours and mine to choose to speak out of fear or to choose to speak out of faith. How do you speak out of faith? By listening to God's word, allowing God's word to have a resting place in your heart, believing in what God's word says, and then you utter it out. So when you're confessing, you're not saying what men say, but you're saying what you believe in your heart. It is the will of God. So your words should be propelled by faith. Keep on feeding on faith. Keep on listening to God's word and you will speak it out. Praise be the name of the living God. And faith is the language that God understands. Remember Romans tells us that anything that we do out of anything that we do without faith, before God it is sin. Before God it is sin. So build your most holy faith. Pray in the spirit. Study God's word. Let it find a resting place in your heart. Then speak out of that word in the name of Jesus Christ. And you shall see the word of the, God, the, word of the Lord finding a resting place and producing manifestations, testimonies and fruits in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. That says the Lord God of hosts, go proceed to this steward to Shebna, who is over the house, and say to him, What have you here, and whom have you here, that you have hewn a, a sepulcher here, as he who hews himself a sepulcher on high, who carves a tomb for himself in a rock? Indeed, the Lord will throw you away violently, O oh, mighty man. And will surely seize you. He will surely turn violently and toss you like a ball into a large country. There you shall die and there your glorious chariots shall be the same of your master's house. So I will drive, I will drive you out of your office and from your position he will, yeah, and from your position he will pull you down. So who is a... Uh, Shebna. Shebna was a prime minister to the king Ezekiah, but he grew haunting. He grew proud. And the Lord sends desire to tell him, listen, your office will be taken by another. You will be replaced by another. Somebody else will take charge over you, over that office. And you know what? Shebna is a prime minister, you know, there are positions of power that you can get into and just pride kicks in. So God tells uh, Isaiah, go and tell Shebna, this will be his end. He has tried to do this. He has tried to be like this. But listen, this is the sure end. And as he fades away, I'll raise up somebody else to be there. And who is this person? The Bible says in verses 20, then it shall be in that day that I will call my servant Eliakim, the son of Ilkar. Ilkia, I will clothe him with your robe and strengthen him with your belt. I will commit your responsibility into his hand. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. The key of the house of David I will lay on his shoulder. So he shall open and no one will shut and he shall shut and no one shall open. I will fasten him as a peg in a secure place and he will become a glorious throne to his father's house so he says do you know what shebna you'll be replaced by eliakim who shall be the prime minister for the for the king uh, Ezekiah, he will be no more. And I'll give him the responsibility of your office. I will clothe him. I will give him the key to the house of Judah, to the house of David. And whatever doors he opens, no man shall shut. Whatever he closes, no man shall open. And this is also a messianic prophecy. So Eliakim is given the attributes of Christ with the authority that Jesus Christ has. When we go to read in the book of Revelation, chapter number 7, you shall see this. Revelation chapter number 7, sorry, number th chapter number 3, verse 7. He says, unto the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, these things says who is holy, 
He who is true. He who has the key of David, he says. He who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. Talks about the Lord Jesus Christ. So Eliakim is given these responsibilities as a foretelling of what Christ will come to do. Remember Shebna because out of pride and arrogance is brought low. Always remember that scripture. For God resists the proud but he gives his grace to the humble. There is no position. You can never be so valuable that, you can, that God will not find a replacement for you. Listen, pride has destroyed a lot of people. There is always a replacement for a proud spirit. A proud heart, God rejects. God looks for a, for a repress, re replacement, sorry. Don't be too proud. No matter the heights that you have achieved, there is a replacement for you. God brings down the proud, but he exalts the humble. May we in humility respond to God. As God lifts you up, never forget it is not your doing. It is the doing of God. Don't say I've been so gifted. You don't have a gift. It came from God. Don't say I'm so talented. You don't have a talent. It came from God. Don't say I'm too wise. It is by wisdom that I've done. Forget. Forget about yourself and think about God. He's the one who holds the old wisdom and he has given to you and me according to the measure of our faith. Don't look down upon people. Don't let pride overrule your heart and your decisions. They will hang. Uh, they, will, they will hang on him all the glory of his father's house, the offspring and the posterity, all vessels of small quantity, from the cups to all the pitchers. In that day, says the Lord of hosts, the peg that is fastened in the secure place will be removed and be cut down and fall. And the burden that was on it will be cut off, for the Lord has spoken." The burden against here will you ships of Tashish, for it is laid waste, so that there is no house, no harbor from the land of Cyprus. It is revealed to them. Be still, you inhabitants of the coastland, you merchants of Asidon, whom those who cross the sea are filled, and on great waters the grain of Silhor. The harvest of the river is her revenue. And she is a marketplace for the nations. Be ashamed, O Sidon. O Sidon. For the sea has spoken. Strength of the sea saying, I do not labor, nor bring forth a children. Neither do I rear young men, nor bring up virgins. When the report reaches Egypt, they will also be in agony at the report of terror. Cross over to Tarshish. Wail, you inhabitants of the coastland. Is this your joyous city? Whose antiquity is from ancient days? Whose feet carried her far off to dwell? Who has taken this counsel against her and crowning city? Whose merchants are princes? Whose traders are the honorable of the earth? The Lord of hosts has purposed it to bring to dishonor the pride of all glory, to bring into contempt all the honorable of the earth. So God has purposed to bring down those who have exalted, those who have been proud. He says, I, he has purposed it. Overflow through, uh, through your land like the river, O daughter of Tashish. There is no more strength, he says. He stretched out his hand over the sea. He shook the kingdoms. The Lord has given a commandment against Canaan to destroy its strongholds. And he said, you will rejoice no more, O you oppressed virgin, daughter of Sidon. Arise, cross over to Cyprus. There also you will have no rest. He said, God says, I will destroy the strongholds of Canaan. Every stronghold that you think you have, every place that you think you can hide, you will find no rest anywhere. When God has set himself loose for judgment, 
there is no rest for your weary soul. Our rest can only be found in him when we humble ourselves and turn to him in repentance. And he says, Behold, the land of Chaldeans, this people which was not, Assyria founded it for wild beasts of the desert, the, the wild beasts of the desert. They set up its towers, they raised up its palaces, and brought it to ruin. Wail, you ships of Tashish, for your strength is laid waste. Now it shall come to pass in that day that terror will be forgotten seventy years according to the days of the king, of one king. And the end of seventy years it will happen to tear as in the song of the chariot of the harlot. Take a half, go about the city. You forgotten harlot, make sweet melody, sing many songs that you may be remembered. And it shall be at the end of seventy years that the Lord will deal with terror. She will return to a higher and commit fornication with all the kingdoms of the world on the face of the earth. Again, and her pay will be set apart for the Lord. It will not be treasured nor laid up, for a great, for a gain will be for those who dwell before the Lord, to eat well, to eat sufficiently, and for fine clothing. He says, do you know what? You sit in, you'll prostitute yourself, you will gain a lot of wealth, but to whose gain, not your gain, it shall be for the gain of the people who have put their trust in God. In other words, they shall be like a wealth transfer, a wealth exchange. The harlotry city will labor so much only for its gain to be shared by those who are called by the name of the Lord. Behold, the Lord makes the earth empty and makes it waste distorts its surface and scatters abroad, abroad its inhabitants. And it shall be, as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with the master, as with the maid, so with a mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the creditor, so with the debtor. The land shall be entirely emptied, and utterly plundered, for the Lord has spoken his word. So God looks and he says, do you know what? There's also judgment coming, not only for these nations, but for the nations of the world. And don't think that you'll escape this, because even though you are a priest, the calamity that will fall upon the people, it will fall upon you. Why? Because as the priest, you did not lead the children. You did not lead, you did not lead the people. And as a servant, so is master. So don't think that it is only the servants who are going to suffer, also the master. He says, not just the maid, but also her mistress. Not only the buyer, but also the seller. Thinking that you love security for your goods, no. What visits the buyer will also visit the seller. The judgment that will come upon the lender will also come upon the borrower. With the creditor, so with the debtor, the land shall be entirely emptied and entirely plundered, for the Lord has spoken this word. The earth moans and fades away. The world languishes and fades away. The haughty people of the earth languish. The earth is also defiled. Under its inhabitants, why is it defined? The next statement says, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinances, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, the curse has devoured the earth, and those who dwell in it are desolate. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men are left. They have broken the covenant. They have transgressed the law. Therefore, judgment has come. When you look the way we live today, that's why I believe the judgment of God is so near. And if we believe this, then we should preach the gospel with every single instrument that we can have to every person around us. Preach the gospel. Let the salvation of the Lord be heard. His love for the people to be heard. 
Because how we are living today in our world, there are laws that have been put into place to change the absolutely, the absolute, you know, uh, uh, truth that lies in God's word. The absolute truth that lies in God's word. There are laws coming up to degrade and to bring down the word of God. Change the word of God. Make people ignorant to the word of God. People are, when you read what is up, what the Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy, talking about the last days. Oh, guys, we cannot forget that we are in the last days. And I pray that every believer is listening to me, that you will give yourself to stay true to God's word, walk in righteousness, and preach the word of God. Not the thoughts of men, but the word of God that shall bring forth conviction to the people around us. And this will take us to stay closely with God, to allow the Holy Spirit to have a dwelling place in our hearts and to drive us, you know, towards fulfilling the Great Commission. We cannot do it just by our minds. We cannot just do it because we've decided we need divine enablement to declare the gospel as it ought to be declared. We are living in the last days where people are transgressing the laws of God and breaking the covenant that is in his word. The new wine falls, the vineyard languishes. All the merry-hearted sigh, the mouth of the tambourine that ceases, the noise of the jubilant ends, the joy of the harp ceases. They shall not drink wine with a strong uh, with a song strong drink is bitter to those who drink it the city of confusion is broken down every house is shut up so that none may go in there is a cry for wine in the street all joy is darkened the mouth of the land is gone in the city desolation is left and the gate is stricken with destruction when when it shall be thus in the midst of the land among the people it shall be like the shaking of an olive a tree like the gleaning of grapes when the vintage is gone is done they shall lift up their voice they shall sing for the majesty of the lord they shall cry out they shall cry aloud from the sea therefore glorify the lord in the dawn light the name of the lord god of israel in the coastlands of the sea from the ends of the earth we have heard songs glory to the righteous but I said, I am ruined, ruined, war to me. The treacherous leaders have dwelt treacherously. Indeed, the treacherous leaders have dwelt very treacherously. Fear and the pit and the fear and the pit and the snare are upon you, O inhabitants of the earth. And it shall be that he who flees from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit, and he who comes up from the, from the midst of the pit shall be caught up in the snare. For the, windows, uh, for the windows from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth are shaken. It says there is no escape from the coming judgment. The earth is violently broken. The earth is split open. The earth is shaken exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall rotter like a heart. It, its transgression shall be heavy upon it and it will fail and not raise again. It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord will punish on high the host of exalted ones and on the earth the king of the earth. They will be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and it will be shut up in the prison after many days they will be punished then the moon will be disgraced and the sun ashamed for the lord of hosts will reign on mount zion and in jerusalem and before his elders meaning the earth will find its judgment but the lord will continue to reign the lord will be exalted you know when all is said and done, heaven and earth shall pass away. When all is said and done, what we know, you know, as life today will cease to exist. We shall be transformed. We shall have a new body. After judgment, those who are go to heaven will go to heaven. 
Those who shall reign with Christ will reign in Christ. Those who shall be doomed for, 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 for condemnation and damnation, you know, they shall go that way. But when all is said and done, God will have the final laugh. Choose your sides well. When you are still alive, choose your sides well. Be on the side of the Lord. We read about Elijah. Elijah, when he, was, when he went to Mount Carmel and repairing the, 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 the altar, he says, let those who are on the side of the Lord come. When we, saw, we saw actually in Moses. Moses, when the judgment of God came, he stood together with Aaron and says, those who are of the Lord, come this side. Before the judgment of the Lord was released. In the same way today, let us not be ignorant of the choices we make. Above all the choices you should make is to make this conscious choice that I choose to be on God's side. Why? When all is said and done, those who are in God's side, they shall stand. As he stands and rules and reigns in the new Jerusalem, we shall stand and reign with him. Make that conscious choice today. In Jesus' name. And as God reigns, chapter number 3, now it turns into a moment of praise unto the Lord. He says, O Lord, you are my God, I will exalt you. I will praise your name for you have done wonderful things. Your counsels of old are faithful and the truth. For you have made a city, you have made a city a ruin, a fortified city a ruin, a place of foreigners to be a city no more. It will never be be built. Therefore, the strong people will glorify you. The city of the terrible nations will fear you, for you have been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shade from the heat. For the blast of the terrible ones is a storm against the wall. You will reduce the noise of aliens as heat in a dry place, as heat in the shadow of a cloud, the song of the terrible ones will be diminished. And in this mount, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of choice pieces, a feast of wines on the lees, a fa of fat things full of marrow, all well-refined wines on the lees, and he will destroy on the mountains the surface of the covering cast over the people and the veil that is spread over all the nations he will swallow up death forever and the lord god will wipe away tears from all faces the rebuke of his people he will take away from all the earth for the lord has spoken and it will be said in that day behold this is our god we have waited for him and he will save us this is the lord we have waited for him and we will be glad and rejoice for his salvation for on this mountain the hand of the lord will rest and moab shall be trampled down under him as straw is trampled down for the refuse heap and he will spread out his hands in the midst as a swimmer reaches out to swim and he will bring down their pride together with their trickery of their hands for the fortress of the high fort of your of your walls it will bring down lay low and bring to the ground down to the dust says praise god these are the things that he will do and you know he talks about uh, this feast that shall be there from um uh, uh verses number six that god will prepare a lavish banquet you know for his people with feasts and with 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 fat and that is full of marrow to do what to celebrate the victories that god has achieved what does it remind you of of the marriage feast of the lamb of god the table that you'll set to celebrate you know the victories of god the last love we believers the church, which shall become the, which is the bride of, of Christ. We shall have a celebration up there to celebrate the victories of the Lord Jesus Christ. When all has been said and done, I said, God will love, will have the last laugh. 
Choose your sides better. When others are feasting, where shall you be? When God is preparing a lavish banquet for his people, where shall you be? Make that choice. And he says in verses number seven, Oh, in that day, behold, this is our God. We have waited for him. We have waited for him. We have waited for him. Is that the attitude that you have? Even when you're going through issues in your life, when you're going through storms in your life, do you take this attitude of saying, God, I am waiting upon you. I am waiting upon you, you know, to open doors for me. I am waiting upon you to manifest your glory over my life. I am waiting upon you to fight my battles. I am waiting upon you, King of glory, to open doors for my work, to grant me victories over deaths, over diseases, over death itself. For he says this, for he will swallow up death forever and the Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces, from the faces of who? For those who are waiting upon him. Your tears will have an end, my brother. Your tears will have an end, my sister. I said there is no situation that is so great that God cannot turn it around. Engage the gears of faith. Engage the, the lips of praise. Let your heart be full of praises unto God. And as you praise him in the pit, you will find one day find yourself in the palace. The stories in the Bible can as well be our own stories. Only if we choose our sides well and engage faith and the gears of praise. And you shall see, you know, uh, victory upon victory. And you shall walk in testimonies beyond measure. Praise be the name of the living God. We've come to the end of our reading today. I want to believe that it has spoken something in your heart and that it has been a blessing uh, to you. So let's meet again tomorrow, same time, same place. May the Lord watch over you and keep you. May his peace be your portion in Jesus' mighty name. See you tomorrow. Thank you.